I have a great um, DIY project that I want to share with everyone. It's something that I found on Pinterest and I know you see a lot of things on Pinterest that look really cool and you think you'll get to around to them sometime. Um, this is one you should definitely check out. So I'm going to show you the finished product first. Ta-da! Um, it's a really cool kind of artsy project that you can do um, in any different color and it's interesting um, stripes are really big right now I'm sure a lot of you know um, and it's really interesting um, because it's got a lot of character and you can do it any color you want and it's so easy it's very time-consuming in the sense that um, there are several ways to do it and um, you know you got a kind of a lot of steps but it's actually really straightforward so I'm gonna tell you the things that you're gonna need and um, how to do it. So first, let me grab this. Sorry about that. So first thing you need are coffee stirs. Um, you can also use popsicle sticks if you prefer. Um, but this is a great project because it's kind of low cost considering um, how unique it is and every project comes out differently. But um, you can get these anywhere. Um, grab a handful every time you go to Starbucks, which is what I have done here. Um, or if you have popsicle sticks lying around your house from, you know, old art projects or craft projects, um, you can do that. Or you can buy them at most craft stores. And what I like about using the coffee sticks as opposed to just regular popsicle sticks, um, some of them have this really interesting kind of character, if you notice here, where they have some imperfections. Um, and that kind of adds a unique element to the project. So, coffee sticks. Or coffee stars. Um, the next thing you're going to need is a frame. Now I got this frame at Michael's for a dollar. They were on sale. Um, it's just an unfinished wooden frame. And the nice thing about this project is you can again use whatever you have lying around. Um, another, I've done this now a few times. Uh, one project I went to Goodwill and I found a really cool frame. I just repainted it. Resurfaced it a little bit. Um, you can buy these craft frames, you can buy pattern frames, you can really do whatever works best for you. But I bought this frame for a dollar and then I painted it black, like so. Um, so, you know, you can really do it however you want. The next thing you're going to need is paint. Um, again, you can use whatever you have lying around from leftover projects or you can buy some. Um, just make sure you find a color pattern that you like. I originally I wanted to do something that was kind of beachy themed. Um, and a little bit art deco-y. So I've got this color scheme right here. It's, um, I've got two shades, it's like a blue and a seafoam green, and I have a purple and an orange. Um, and I'm using the Martha Stewart. It's her craft, it's satin finish, it's multi-surface, which is great because I bought these, um, little things. And I can paint on glass, I can paint on wood, I can paint metal. It works on a lot of different surfaces. And I really like it. I um I only did one coat and it came out, you know, perfectly, which is really, really nice. Um I will caution you, maybe buy if you're not if you're buying paint, buy some paint ahead of time. Um, or just think about your color palette before you go to the store because it can get a little daunting. Um and if you are using paint, try and find colors that complement each other but that won't blend together. Unfortunately for this one, um the seafoam green and the blue that I have are really similar, and you can see here are some painted sticks. You can see, oh gosh, right here, they're kind of similar. Um, which I just kind of said, you know, roll with it for this project. But think about your color pattern. So you need your paint. Um, let's see what else you need: some foam, sponges, or whatever for your painting. And that's it really in terms of supplies. Oh, you will need scissors and glue, but that's something most people have lying around. So start off, you need to paint everything. Paint your frame if you're going to paint that. I did for this, I did one coat. And you can see it's kind of still rough. I don't know if you can tell on the camera. It's still really rough. Um, it's kind of got that unfurnished, um, unfinished look to it, which I really like. Then you need to paint your popsicle stick, or your coffee stars. Um, and you can do this several ways. Uh, some people like to do multiple paint, multiple coats. I only did one coat on each because I wanted to keep kind of like the woody. It's not really coming out really well. You can still see some of the grains of the wood, and I kind of wanted to keep that roughness to it. Um, and I would suggest 
before you start painting, figure out the length, um, the, what your longest piece is going to be. So I did this one, you know, the shorter ways. Um, you could also do it the long lengthwise, and you'll see that your stick is still longer than the frame. And the reason this is important, if you're using a bigger frame particularly, um, the reason this is important is you need to figure out how much you need to paint. Um, I realized that I was not going to need the entire stick regardless of how I did it. I wanted to get as much painted as possible so that I could, you know, use the sticks multiple times. But a handy hint, line up some sticks and tape them down to newspaper. Um, just keep them so they're sort of even and then just tape them and paint them and let them dry. This is really helpful for a few reasons. One, you don't have to paint every individual stick. And two, when you're done, you know, they're laying flat to dry, but you can move them and they're all handy and then you just pull out a stick every time you're going to use it. Um, I also recommend painting more sticks than you actually think you're going to need because you go through a lot. Um, you know, you need to cut them and everything like that and you're going to just use a lot and it's easier to make a bunch all in the beginning. So anyway, paint them, let them dry according to your paints um, standard. I left mine, I think, for like three hours. And then what you're going to need to do next is figure out, you know, your design. You can you have a lot of freedom when it comes to this part. Um, some people just like to do simple lines and just not even worry about the pattern. Just line them all up and just repeat. Um, I wanted to kind of go for more of like a rough geometric, you know, shape. So what I ended up doing is I did a solid stick and then two lines of broken patterns, however I did, and then another solid stick, different colors. Um, and this is the part that honestly takes the most time, is cutting out your pieces to fit exactly right. So what I did, my frames came, notice, came with this kind of like insert, which I used as like a template. Um, but the insert has instructions on the back and then is this. Mine doesn't have, my frame doesn't have a back either, which is important. Um, but it kind of has this boring thing, um, and I didn't want that to show. So I used this as a template when I was cutting out my sticks. Um, but then I just took a piece of uh, brown paper. I took an old grocery bag and cut, traced it and cut out the length. Um, and then that was really helpful because it allowed me then t to make it one solid piece without having to worry. So the, the next part, like I said, is kind of time-consuming. And it's really as time-consuming as you want it to be. I wanted mine to be as perfect as I could. But what you need to start doing is cutting out your sticks um, to however length, whatever length you want. Now some people do this, they'll make, you know, okay, I want all my pieces to be the same length and just rearrange the patterns every time. Um, I just want my lines to be kind of broken, so there's very similar in terms of the, the layout, but not every piece is uniform. Um, but you do it however you want, and what you start to do is you just cut them out, and then you start gluing them down with glue. And um, you can see, you know, you can do whatever pattern you want. Sometimes I use all four colors, sometimes I didn't. Um, and not every stick, you know, is the same. You just need to make sure, whatever, however you're doing it, that your sticks go all the way to the border. So for mine on, on this one, you know, I've got the frame, it doesn't have to go all the way to the edge. But you need to make sure that when you turn it over, this is a flat line. There are no sticks overhanging because otherwise it won't fit into your frame. So um, what I did is I, for the first half of my project, I laid it all out first and then glued row by row by row. And then towards the end, I just kind of was like, I'm just going to wing it and um, just start to glue them down each row at a time. And I suggest doing a thin strip of glue, putting your stick down, doing a thin strip, as opposed to putting glue the whole way, in case you don't finish. Um, but it's really, it was really easy to do. It just, you know, it took a while. I did it while watching TV. It was a numbing activity. So you get it all done, make sure it's all lined up, glue it down, pop it in your frame, and that's it. You're done. And the thing I really like is that um, this project is, is, like I said, very simple. Um, would, this is would be a great thing, you know, to get kids to do. Um, I would maybe cut out some of the sticks first if you want if you're gonna do it with kids because pieces do sort of go flying. Um, you know, I've got I found so many little tiny baby bits lying around my kitchen table, but it was it was fairly simple um, and it's very versatile and each piece is gonna be unique. Um, so I really hope you enjoy this tutorial, and once again, here's the finished product. 
Um, I'll post a link to the original tutorial that I followed. Like I said, I found this on Pinterest. Um, but if you have any questions, hit up in the comment section, and um, I hope you enjoyed this.